so we got this question from Stephen about condensate trap depth. Hey, Brian, this is Stephen with the Comfort Squad in Charlottesville, Virginia, and I have a question regarding condensate traps. So the situation here is we've had a number of nuisance calls in the last couple of weeks on retrofit jobs where we just couldn't get the static below like one inch. So what appears to be happening is the high static pressure in the air handler is creating a high negative pressure at the drain trap. And that's pulling enough water into the pan to overflow the secondary switch. Um, we're currently using the Rector Seal Easy Traps. They're a one inch trap depth, um, but the solution to this seems to be uh, fabricating a deeper trap. So. There's formulas online and some info, but I find it to be kind of confusing. So a dive into the effect that negative pressure has on trap depth, I think would be really awesome, especially uh, this time of the year. Thanks, man. All right, Stephen. So you bring up a really good point, and I'm actually, I think it's quite incredible that I haven't written about this or talked about this before. Maybe we did. I think Roman Ball actually did some content on this a while back. But this idea of trap depth, and its relationship to static pressure in negatively pressurized systems. So to be clear, we're not talking about gas furnaces or systems where the evaporator coil is over the blower. That would be positively pressurized. In those cases, the water wants to move out because the air is pushing it out. No, we're talking about systems where we need to prevent air from pulling back into the drain line because it's negatively pressurized. And that's typical for air handling systems, pancake systems, heat pumps, that kind of stuff. That's that's typically the way you do it. You have an evaporator coil, then you have the blower over top, meaning that the evaporator coil is under negative pressure. A one inch trap is typical for a system that is operating under 0.5 inches of water column. And that goes along with this rule of thumb. And the rule of thumb is, that you double the inches based on the inches of water column. And th these two things have no relationship to each other. This is just a rule of thumb. And it already has a little bit of safety factor um, kind of built into that calculation. So this isn't something that is like a completely hard and fast rule. I mean, if you have a maybe a commercial system, different size, I don't know, may maybe you know, follow the manufacturer's instructions. But when it comes to a good solid rule of thumb, you double it. So if you have 0.5 inches of negative water column, generally speaking, one inch is enough. And so if you have 0.5 inches of return, the assumption is, well, you're going to have 0.5 inches of supply and that that's going to balance. But that isn't always the case, right? A lot of cases, you get higher return sides. So you might have one inch of total external static and you might have 0.7 on the return side. Also keep in mind that that return static isn't always going to stay the same, especially with ECM motors. So as that filter starts to get dirtier, it's going to build up. So you really want to build in a safety factor there. And so if you have a system that the maximum that you would ever anticipate uh, that it would be is maybe 0.7, then you would want at least an inch and a half trap. But at that point, if you're already making it larger than sort of those standard pre-made traps, you might as well go ahead and make it bigger. So as big as you really realistically can. It doesn't hurt to make it bigger. Um, other than that, it holds a little more water. Maybe that would make it a little more likely to back up. But generally speaking, you know, if you're fabricating your drain properly, the outlet's lower than the inlet by at least a pipe dimension. Uh, and if you can build a, a three-inch trap, for example, uh, well, that's, that's even better. But generally speaking, if you have a system that's going to be 0.5 or less on the return side and you know it always will be, one inch is enough. Realistically, maybe design it for up to a one-inch return static. That would give you a two-inch trap, uh, and, then you're, and then you're just safe. So basically for residential, a two-inch trap is going to be about the most you would ever need on a negative pressure rise system because one inch of return side water column that would be so excessive that you would have massive system problems at that point. Um, one inch is kind of just kind of pushing it. It's pushing it when the filter gets dirty. It's pushing it if you have high return static. Uh, so that's really the answer to the question. I know that was really, really short, but hopefully you found that helpful. Um, and again, like I said, if you're working on something different, you can always look at the manufacturer's literature. Also keep in mind, I'm talking about kind of a standard P-trap. So inlet, outlet, I'm not talking about a running trap. Uh, you trap that kind of thing. And so the, those numbers are going to vary if that's the type of trap. I'm talking about actual column of water being held in that trap is between one and two inches. And the more you know that return static is going to be, get it closer to that two inch trap size. Hopefully that makes sense. I want to give a shout out to Steven and Comfort Squad. Comfort Squad is a, an amazing company. My friends Neil Comparetto and John Semmelhack um, operate that company and huge fans of those guys. Thank you for the question, Steven. Thanks for watching.
If you're willing, give this video a thumbs up and drop us a comment. Don't forget to hit that bell icon to stay updated with all of our future videos. And as a quick reminder, HVAC School isn't just a YouTube channel. Dive deeper with us at our main website, hvacrschool.com. Curious for more knowledge on the go? We've got you covered. Tune into the HVAC School podcast available on all your favorite podcast apps. And while you're at it, join our thriving Facebook group. Also, don't miss out on our free mobile applications available for both iPhone and Android. We're all about community. Vortex. Bytex.